Welcome back YouTubers and thanks for watching yet another watch review, a vintage watch review from Todd's Watch Shop. Today I'm going to be reviewing a watch from this country right here, France. I have before you a Helbros Invincible. This is a wonderful watch. This is from my own collection. I'm starting to sell a couple because I've had a lot of watches coming in and I'm running out of space and I do have to sell them. Um, I can't keep them all and I have probably hundreds of watches and this is a hobby. This isn't uh, a business. Um, I do unfortunately have to start getting rid of some of these watches if my hobby is to at least pay for itself. This is a watch that I got that was a complete mess when I got it. It's a 17 jewel. It has a French movement. I don't know if you can just make it out, but at the very bottom you see there it says France. Um, this is not a, this is a Swiss brand, but it's a French movement. Sometimes Helbros, I've had a couple Helbros that have Swiss movements in them. Some have German movements in them. This one is a French movement. Um, and that's really cool. And I will go into detail, a little bit more detail than that. Um, one of the things you'll notice on the back, it is a screw on back, which is great because those are, those are spectacular. And you'll notice it says waterproof. Now that tells you that this watch is in fact, um, pretty old. This watch probably comes from based on, based on the art deco numbering, um, Arabic numerals that you can see. I would put this watch at around mid 1950s. It is anti-magnetic. So that puts it at least in the 50s, but anything that says waterproof means that it is in fact older than 1963. As I've mentioned in some of my other videos, uh, there was a class action lawsuit in the United States against the watch importers and watch manufacturers uh, because they were listing watches as being waterproof when in fact they were not even water resistant. Um, so after 1963, they were no longer allowed to put waterproof and they had to put water resistance and if it actually had any measurable amount of water resistance, they actually had to state uh, the number of ATMs, which is atmospheric pressure, um, first atmosphere. Um, so this uh, this is shock resistant, so that tells us that it has an Inca block, um, which is a spring spring jewel on the on the uh, the balance wheel, and I'll show the inside of this a little bit later. This is a gold plated uh, case and gold plated crown. The hands are also gold plated, as are the numerals. It's very nice. Uh, this crystal is also is also original. Uh, I sanded it. Uh, I mean, this it was this watch was a mess, um, but I sanded it using a five part sanding process. It was uh, one thousand grit, fifteen hundred grit, two thousand grit, then twenty five hundred uh, grit, and then finally three thousand grit. And uh, then I polished it out using using this polish again this is not a uh, this is not a paid endorsement but I do really like this stuff and after polishing it then I coated it with this anti-glare um, wax which is really good stuff uh, I bought this at a trade show a long time ago and have a couple a uh, couple sticks of these I'm glad I bought them I used them for glasses but uh, sunglasses but they work really well um, this movement I completely disassembled I'll try to see if I have some pictures of the disassembly process. I tended to not keep those. I know that I've had this one for a while. I've had this one for over a year. I've maybe worn it uh, about 10 times, I suppose. Um, I had this before I deployed. But um, I would have completely removed the bridge, um, all the gears, uh, put them all in my ultrasonic cleaner to completely clean it, reassembled uh, with the oil. I use this uh, Amoebus um, Swiss oil which is good stuff to use and I use my um, Bergeron oilers, use the red one. Uh, and I also forgot to mention that when I attach this crown, I'm sorry, when I when I attach this, uh, this crystal, this acrylic um, crystal, I use this UV glue, uh, which I used, which I then sealed. Uh, and so that, that actually gives it much better water pressure than uh, it would have come from the factory because they would have just been pressed on using one of these or something similar. And, and uh, if you want me to explain these tools, I can make a video about that at one point. Um, this has an original uh, British made. Um, it was new old stock. It's, you know, it's got just a little bit of wear because I've worn it, but it has a, a new old stock uh, British uh, leather band um, 
hand sewn, handmade. This this thing is excellent. Um, I gosh, I really love this watch. But like I said, I have so many coming in. I don't really know what I'm going to sell it for yet. But everything is uh, everything is um, either original and repaired um, or refurbished. None of this is is new stuff. So it's it's original. Let me wind it so you can actually see. Probably should have done it from the beginning. I just wasn't thinking. Timing was spectacular in this. I mean, this watch is, is just absolutely excellent. Let me set the time to you. Yeah, I don't know time this, but just so you can see it. And you can see that. This is a this is a fantastic watch. And it's the Hellbros Invincible line. Hellbros at the time that this watch came out, they were sort of the sort of the invicta of the 1950s, 1960s. They were always coming up with very cool designs, um, and they were a very classy watch and, and very expensive. And they they were very successful during that time, but they eventually faded out. Um, I want to make sure you can get a good good view of this. It's a nice, very nice off white um, uh, face. Um, I'll I'll also show a quick video um, of the. Of the company Helbros, a little bit of history of Helbros, and then I'll also show uh, the movement um, after this video. Thank you very much. William Helbein fled Jewish persecution in Russia to start a new life in the United States. Immigrating in 1911 through Ellis Island in New York City, William founded Helbros Watch Company with his brothers two years later and officially incorporated in 1916. For the next 60 years, Helbros saw much success. William used all available mediums to advertise his watches, including print advertising, radio advertising, and later TV advertising. He distributed watches through catalogs, shops, dealers, and any other way he and his company could find. Helbros made watches for any taste and multiple price points. In the late 1960s, Helbros was eventually purchased by Elgin as a result of dwindling sales from the influx of inexpensive Swiss watches. Eventually, due to Elgin's own failures, the brand and trademark was sold in the early 1970s to Jules Jurgensen. Although no new watches have been produced under the name, the Helbros marquee leaves an indelible mark on the history of orology. This Helbros Invincible utilizes a 7-joule French mechanical movement. This movement is anti-magnetic, utilizing nickel-iron-based alloys. The movement is also shock-protected due to the use of Inca block on the main balance jewel. The escapement points are jeweled, which adds to the movement's accuracy. The movement has been completely rebuilt, with all parts having been cleaned in an ultrasonic cleaner, and then the movement was reassembled and lubricated with Swiss Mobius watch oil. I hope you have enjoyed this video and that it has provided some history to this great watch manufacturer. Please click the like button and be sure to subscribe for more videos like these. If you have any recommendations for other watch reviews, please leave a comment below. This watch will be for sale on my eBay store and I will post the link to it in the details section of the video. Thank you for watching.